that 4 by 4 you to your thinking of quote unquote building for that big adventure. Dude, sorry to say, but 80% of your plans in that respect are probably nothing more than really dumb ideas. Actually, I'm not sorry to say that at all. Details next. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au and I get new cars cheap for buyers here in Australia. Website for that, obviously, or you can just click the card that's up there now, dude. Now, I am coming at this as a 4x4 dual cab owner myself. I own a current Triton GSR and it is dead stock. Sorry, ARB, not really. And I am also coming at this as a mechanical engineer and I feel that it is time for some real no shit dialogue on this because the likes of ARB and TJM and so many others and their significant marketing machines, they're just so keen to connect a thousand industro spec Dysons to your bank account and just keep sucking until it's totally dry. There's a billion accessories you can bolt on too, right? There are frigging accessories for accessories. It's like accessory inception out there. And there are all these commentators who will show you their personal pimp's Cadillac of quasi-sponsored ute builds. And, dude, that's fine. If it's just you perusing perfectly innocent 4x4 porn. Like, knock yourself out. But what's not okay, in my view, is for you to start thinking that all of this stuff is a good idea or even essential for you, because it's not. The only rational reason to modify a vehicle from standard is if that vehicle will not do something you need it to do out of the box. And then you've got to ask yourself, should I have bought perhaps a completely different frigging vehicle? So... With this in mind, here's a question I got last week in a few parts about buying a new dual cab. This would be our first new car buy as we have always been driving 7 to 10 plus year old cars. We are looking at this new vehicle as a long lasting quality experience. Our first priority is reliability. Our second priority in this case would be a brand with a reliable warranty service track record. Okay, so far, good plan, approved. I'm not going to name this dude in this particular report because there's no point embarrassing him. This is just an example, one of many. A lot of people jump down the rabbit hole that we appear to be poised above. We are looking for a ute with a payload as close to 1100 kilograms as possible. We want airbag protection for rear passengers, rear aircon vents, keyless entry preferable, optional winch bar, rear protection tow bar, snorkel. Okay, so you probably don't need a winch and snorkels are generally a joke unless you actually intend to do really deep water crossings, in which case you will also need to extend the breathers for the transmission and differentials and things of that nature and you will need to protect the engine cooling fan and if you do any of that crap and exceed the specified waiting depth, you will void the warranty, which is also apparently so important to our unnamed hero in this case. Reason for buying a new ute is to build it up as a reliable remote family tourer as well as for driving medium to advanced four-wheel drive tracks for the next 10 to 15 years and not having to tow anything, hence the close to 1100 kilogram payload requirement. Please shoot me an email first as I never fill in my personal details online. So how about I do a video on this instead, dude? Would that be okay with you? Like, even if it's not, we're doing it, all right? You're probably not going to like it, but that's quite okay because ultimately I prioritise honesty and integrity over the appeasement of others. And it is so liberating, frankly, not to give a shit what people think about what you say. I wholeheartedly recommend this to everyone, particularly you. 
Here's the thing with these Utes, okay? Hiluxes, Rangers, BTs, Navaras, Tritons, D-Maxes, and even Shitbox Amarok, which will not offer you those airbags at the side in row two that you so want for the kiddies. They're all light duty vehicles, okay? I can't stress this enough. Light duty, like you've got to keep saying it to yourself, light duty vehicles. If you're thinking about your ute in the context of it being your truck, wake up, dude. I would strongly suggest you go out and look at a real friggin' truck. They're not the same thing. In fact, Blind Freddy could see, Ray Charles could see, Jose frigging Feliciano could see that they're not even close. Bolting all this crap up, in, on, and around these kinds of vehicles, and then adding the four to five people you want to add, and all the provisions, and otherwise maxing out this stated 1100 kilo payload, and then flogging your prized possession, your build of a quote, medium to advanced four wheel drive tracks for quote, 10 to 15 years is at best a really bad plan when your stated overarching priority is, quote, reliability. Let's break that down. In fact, that sound you hear is reality pounding on the front door, demanding to be let in, thereby to assist you with recalibrating your, frankly, batshit plan. If you let reality in, it would explain to you somewhat calmly that your light-duty 4x4 dual cab pickup is about to get caught in the crossfire, and you are doing this to it principally because severity of operation is the enemy of reliability, and you want both, apparently, and they are mutually exclusive. Reliability is always compromised when operational severity increases, okay? That's just how this works. These kinds of vehicles, frankly, are not designed to be beaten endlessly at the limits of conflicting capabilities, like limit of off-road ability plus limit of payload capacity equals a really great way to break something expensive and or end up parked on the roof. And this kind of disaster happens all the time out there on the road to Dingo Piss Creek. People often think it's just a great idea to tow something really heavy as well, like really, really heavy. Although not in this case, thankfully. But if you do think that, it's not. Compromise is the key. So if you are going to do this adventuring, right, I would strongly recommend figuring out a way to do it at well under the maximum payload capacity of your light duty pickup. Or carry the maximum payload if you must, but do not go anywhere near a heavy duty demanding four wheel drive track at the same time. Or you could buy an actual truck that can do this stuff, like an Iveco Turbo 4x4, which is kind of designed to do both things at the same time. And if you go out there and check out the Iveco, have a look at how different the fundamental engineering architecture of a vehicle such as this actually is. That Iveco is clearly not a light duty vehicle. Alternatively, I guess you could put 500 kilos in the ute, which is really just the family and a few essentials, and maybe you could tow a trailer, not more than about 2,000 kilos, okay? Like 400 kilos tear for the trailer and a payload of 1,600 kilos. Dual axles, braked, roller rocker suspension, a quality job, but it does not have to be the fanciest off-road trailer that money can buy. Just a decent trailer for heavy stuff for touring, okay? Lots of people turn their utes into the pimp's Cadillac of 4x4s, which, in my view, is a great recipe to blow a lot of cash overloading these vehicles or on limit loading them, and thus engineering out all the latent reliability the vehicles possess out of the box. If you max out the payload and then max out the severity of the usage, everything is going to break sooner and it will be a pig to drive. And 
I know this is heresy, of course, to the ears of ARB or TJM. They just want to sell you one or two or three or ten of everything. But it's up to you to remember that you don't have to say yes. If you do end up going with a conventional Japanese 4x4 dual cab, I would suggest you choose one that's been on sale for at least 12 months, which is just about long enough to tell if there are any intrinsic engineering problems with that vehicle in service. And frankly, I would move heaven and earth to minimize the mods and accessories. Like, really cut back, dude. Much to the disappointment of ARB, TJM, Red Ark, Rhino, Pedders, Warn, etc. But I assure you they will get over it because a new Muppet will be through the door anytime soon, right? And you'll get over it too if you're smart enough to learn that less is actually more in this area. You are not tooling up for a frigging zombie apocalypse, dude. You are taking your light duty pickup for a drive in the bush. Hopefully several relatively uneventful drives in the bush. There's a dingo piss creek in every county. That's in our constitution. Most people aren't taught that. And you might as well visit them all, but hey, I don't know why. But I do know that much of this is probably not what you want to hear, especially if you have stuck through this video to this point, okay? 4x4 porn addiction is a thing, and it's a dead set problem. However, I can tell by virtue of this stated desire to exploit all 1,100 kilos of payload, if possible, that our hero here, and perhaps you, are setting yourself up for 4x4 porn addiction disaster. I'd suggest that it's best to recalibrate and recalibrate. Get it right. Because your so-called truck is not actually a truck, dude. It's not. And you will break it if you impose truck-like demands upon it. This concept really is that simple. 